All righty, all right. Uh, what camera am I on? Let's switch over real quick here. And that's not the guy I want to look at. What's up, everybody? Long time no see. It's been a little bit, like uh, a couple weeks, two weeks, maybe. Something like that. Um, I figure it's about time I do a live stream, because I haven't done one in a while, right, guys? Hey, everyone, welcome. What do we got now? We're at 240 of you guys. Wow. <laughs> uh, Nick Welker here from Welker Farms. Um, basically, today, I'm do a little sprain in the brute. I got him right here. And my brother just took off in the Apache. He's hitting up the last of our spring wheat crop that needs sprayed. There's just a little bit left. And my dad just took off in the water truck to go get a load of water. So I'm going to take this girl out. So uh, let's go fire her up. And uh, I'll get set up here. Answer some of you guys' questions and stuff. So now we got a bunch yet coming in. Okay, let's see here. We're in the brute now. Let me flip this over. I'm going to start it up. I'm going to... My seat leaks the air down. This little switch right here. I think there's an air leak. It's a brand new seat, but somewhere inside there's an air leak. So, uh, I gotta let the air build up for a second here. So let's go ahead and get this started. There we go. Let the air pressure build up so I can raise my seat up. Let's turn the GPS on. Okay. While that's booting up there, getting our GPS, I'm gonna plug my power cord in because uh, I'm going to try doing this without my battery pack. I'm going to try streaming the day with just the power plugged in. See if that keeps up with the battery drain. So yeah, I've been gone for a good two weeks. Uh, vacation wasn't that long, but I did go on vacation for about four or five days. Um, it was fun. Had a good time. It was really relaxing. Well, for the most part, vacations aren't that relaxing sometimes. Oh, there's my seat. Yeah, it's working. That's better. Okay. Let's turn some air on in here. So, uh, yeah, so I had a good time, but I ended up getting kind of sick, too. That kind of stopped me from uh, doing much streaming for a while. So, uh, but now we're back, and it's time to keep farming. Basically, the crops are growing strong. I need to go walk around with you guys and show you what they look like. The peas look excellent. The chickpeas, as far as I know, are looking really good. The wheat is phenomenal at this point. It needs, uh, needs some more time to grow, but... Over the weekend, if you guys didn't see on our social media, uh, we got about three and a half inches of rain in basically four hours, which is, that's almost a record for us. That's, that rarely happens, rarely happens. That's huge. So we got a lot of water. We're so thankful for it. It was such a blessing. We had rain the week before, like an inch and a tenth or something like that. Uh, so we are already fairly set up as far as having water to continue uh, for the plants to keep growing. But this rain we just got, oh man. <laughs> It really helped out. So, yeah, it's a little muddy out there, but we gotta get the spraying done because the weeds are growing and if they get too big, they get hard to kill and I need to kill them. So I'm gonna go ahead and just mud it in. I've already gotten the brute kind of muddy already running through it. <clears throat> so, uh, but yeah, we're uh, we're gonna we're gonna make that happen. So hello everybody, welcome, I see you guys are there. I'm reading some of the comments here on and off. Uh, I'll talk about the map soon, so hang on for that one. Let's, uh, let's get going here. I can work while uh, doing this right. Let's turn our hydraulics on and our water pump so that way we're uh, agitating the tank back there. Let's open our field up. I'll pull up what I had. I, I actually sprayed a load out this morning, but then it started raining on us today. So I had to quit spraying, <coughs> excuse me, while the rain was coming down. Auto steer, yes. Let's turn on miles per hour, zoom out a little bit here. Uh, because if it rains while you're spraying, it washes the chemical off the plants, and then you waste the chemical. Uh, let's see, let's refill a tank, actually. Tank, refill tank, yes. Okay, that's all good. Our GPS is still coming in. How many satellites do we have so far? Nine satellites, we need more now. So, uh, but it finally let up in the sky. Uh, it's clear enough in the background, so it doesn't look like any more rain's coming, so I'll be able to do some spraying. Got my camera mount in the window, so we're good there. GPS just picked up enough to do auto steer. That's good. Okay, so uh, what I'm doing is I'm spraying the chemical follow. Let me flip the camera around. There we go. Okay. We'll leave right there. Um, I'm uh, <coughs> because some of the land we leave fallow every year uh, to uh, to build up moisture and uh, nutrients reserves. 
we have to kill the weeds that grow on it. So that's what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go and I'm knocking out those acres. Our goal on this farm, if we can eventually, is to slowly get to the point where we can farm uh, basically crop on crop, where we have very little chem follow because the less chem follow we have, the less weeds we have and the more crops we can grow. Biggest limiting factor for us has always been water though. Can we get enough rain to support that kind of farming? Well, this year it seems like we're getting it. So we're gonna, we'll see what we can do. Each year we're adding a little bit more and a little bit more crop acres in, but I think we've got some neighbors that are growing canola. I've talked to some other guys about growing canola. It's a popular crop. I think it's something we need to look into. That or mustard or something. If we can get another kind of a type of crop on the farm. Uh, so that way we'll have our pulse crop, our cereal crop, and our oil seed. Oil seed being mustard, flax, or canola. Pulse being chickpeas, peas, or lentils. Uh, and cereal being wheat, barley, durum. Those kind of things. So, I'm driving out the road right now. So that's what the plan is. We're hoping that eventually we can get to that. And it'll mean more work, but it'll also mean potentially more money and less weeds and healthier soil. It's kind of like doing a cover crop. The only thing is you have to have water to make that work. And uh, usually we don't get it, but it seems like maybe things are changing. Last year was kind of a drought, so we'll see how it goes. Oh, this is nice having the camera right here. I have both hands. I don't have to sit there like this. I don't know why I don't do this thing sooner. And it looks like my charging, my phone's charging faster, faster with this cord than, uh, than it's draining the battery. So we're good there too. So it looks like we're gonna have a good stream. Uh, thank you guys for watching my videos. It's a real pleasure. I think you guys all really enjoyed the Big Root time lapse video. That one wasn't too bad to put together. It was the biggest time lapse I've ever done. It took a lot of time, but the actual editing of it went together pretty smoothly. I don't know if I'm just getting better at it, or if I just had it organized better, or, or maybe my software and my computer just performed better and I didn't have as much trouble. Usually sometimes I run into problems, whether it's encoding issues or I don't know. There's usually something that happens that really sets me back. I still am a perfectionist in it, and I watched that video, and I see little things that I wish I would have done differently, but overall, I think it came out very well. It was pretty awesome. Building this machine was awesome. If you guys don't know already, I'm in Big Brew right now. That time-lapse video is this machine that I'm in right at the moment. Uh, it drives like a dream. It's amazing that just a couple months ago, this was sitting in the shop in pieces. So. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, we're pretty, I'm pretty impressed with how it turned out. Not to like pat us on the back or anything. It's just, it, it, we were <laughs> pleasantly surprised. So I'm pulling into a field right here. I'm going to flip the camera around. Let's get set up. So as you can see right here, I've got spring wheat right here. And then my chem follow. Fallow meaning leaving the ground fallow as in nothing seeded right here. There's not a lot of weeds you can see here, but there's a lot of kochia and Russian thistle coming up. And of course, there's a lot of grasses too. I'm not too worried about the grasses like volunteer wheat, wheat that's been there from seed from last year or wild oats, that'll kill easy. It's the kochia, the Russian thistle, that's the stuff that I want to kill. And if you let it get too big, you can't kill it. It it's becomes really difficult to kill. So that's why I'm out here in this field to do this. I've already made one pass down this side this morning when the wind wasn't blowing because typically we have wind that blows from the west. Right now we're facing north, west being blowing west to east like this. So if I'm spraying along this edge, it'll take my chemical and it'll drift it into the weed, which will then kill a lot of our crops. So you have to be really careful about that. So this morning it was so calm, which is what I like. It's actually really calm right now. I went in, sprayed on a lot of these fields, one pass along the crop side. So I don't even have to do that. I'll pull my thumb off here, show you guys what I'm talking about. See right there? So you can actually already see my, my pass I made this morning uh, from when I, when I went around the crop. Let's zoom out, where are we at? Uh, da -da, da -da, there we are. Let's zoom in a little bit. So yeah, you can see along this field there, I've already made a pass. And then in this morning I sprayed out that field to the south there. This field's right along Shelby, Montana. It's actually gonna be in the new map. The field that I'm in right now is gonna be in the new map for Farming Simulator. So you can see I sprayed that whole place out. That little skip right there, it looks like a skip. That's not a skip, that's a bunch of uh, trees in the field. And then I did this 40 acre piece right here, that's 40 acres. And you can see how I did one pass along these fields with the crop side. So the crops are on like this side and that side and this side. 
And then I went ahead in this field that was next to the chicks peas. I sprayed that out with the last bit of my load on that one. So we need to do these ones right here. Let's go back to my aerial view, zoom in a little bit. Let's wing this girl out. You guys have probably seen this before if you haven't already. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in neutral so I'm not creeping forward. Hold the neutral button. Hydraulics are on, so let's go ahead and lift the booms up. We're gonna wing this out, it's a 100 foot boom. There it goes. While the right side's going out, the left side is going as well. You can see. It's not the fastest folding boom on the planet, but it gets out there. You don't want to go too fast. Those booms are kind of fragile when they're... I know they engineer them to be pretty strong, but it makes me nervous when they're folded out like this because that's not the natural... Uh, they're not meant to take abuse in this... Uh, in this position. I mean, when they fold all the way out, that's the that's where the, the structural the strength of it is designed to have. So wait for the other side to go back all the way. There we go. Okay, let's fold the second half of the wing tip out. The, this side goes first usually for some reason. It's going right there. See that wing out? What kind of yields are we gonna get with the rains that we've had in our spring weight? Well, that's really hard to say. Last year we thought we were going to get well over 40 bushels an acre spring wheat, maybe 50 even. Uh, but it ended up being 20 because it got so hot in July and it quit raining and it fried the crop. That could still happen. It's still young enough that it it, it, it doesn't necessarily, we're not we're not guaranteed a crop at this point. Um, it, there's very still time that it could be damaged by drought. Uh, you know, there's a lot of water in the ground right now. It's going to definitely let, let it last a long time. But we're gonna need more rain, definitely. We're very thankful for what we got, but it's not it's not set in stone yet. So if we could get another inch to inch and a half rain in the first two weeks of July, uh, that would set us in for a pretty good crop for us, for our, our, our typical crop size in this area. All right, so we are folded out. I got about the height that I want on the sprayer down there. I'm roughly about 20, 20 inches or so above the canopy, which the canopy being the stubble here. All right, let's see, I'm gonna put this. So we wanna put this in low range. So I'm gonna shift the rear axis, it's got a splitter in the differential. Flip that over. Check the parking brake, make sure it's off. Parking brake's off, let's put her in drive. Let's line up the guy in here. I'm gonna go ahead and reshift it over. I'm just gonna get my tire tracks and we'll reset the, the AD line. I do have it in the system and I could probably uh, flip through here and find it. Let me. Uh, see here I'm lining up my tracks let's just say right there okay it's neutral let's hit uh let's go to our AB line here let's go next for our swath until we find one that lines up oh there we go that's probably right there perfect okay put her back and drive let's go line up the field and then we'll start spraying and then I'll put the phone up and I can uh, keep tabs on what you guys are talking about right so yeah, that rain was unbelievable. It only rained, well, I should say only. It was about a 10 mile radius rain that came down, but it just stayed over our farm. It just hovered uh, over uh, the city of Shelby and our farm. And that doesn't happen very often. So, I mean, it was quite a blessing to have that much rain come down. At a certain point, there could be too much rain. Not that it'll hurt the crops, but it just runs off. It doesn't soak in the ground. And that's kind of what happened after, you know, after two inches, it's not gonna do a lot but it's still good to have and good to see. So I'm gonna go ahead and flick my uh, product switch on here up. Now when I start going, it's gonna start spraying. Let's, let's intercept our, uh, intercept our AV line here. Okay, start that, there we go. I'm gonna be spraying today. We got different nozzles on the sprayer today. So I'm gonna try to get about roughly uh, 15 miles an hour is kind of what I'm shooting for. About 15. Auto steer has taken over. I'm just gonna double check my boom height here, make sure it's good. I don't have any kind of auto boom on at the moment. We have a system, but it's just not hooked up. It was having some problems. We just haven't had time to figure it out and get it hooked up. So I manually control the boom height. A couple badger holes there. All right. 
Did it flood the fields out from Monty? Hello, Monty. Good to have you here. Uh, not really. There was a couple areas, like our lake, which is over here. You guys can't see it. <laughs> our, uh, that area did grow. The lakes that were already still out there that hadn't dried up yet got bigger. Some of them are bigger than they were from the runoff from the snow, and some of them are about the same. But there is some areas that are just wet through the fields. And I this morning, I was driving through. I was actually cutting through quite a bit of water with this thing. It just kept going, so I didn't, I didn't get stuck. I got some close calls, but I didn't get stuck. Uh, but yeah, you can see all the growth. See all that green growing in here? Most of this right here, there's a lot of grass growing right there. That's uh, grasses, that's wheat, barley, or not barley, see, wheat, wild oats, stuff like that. But you can't really see it, but down low, there's a bunch of broadleaf plants about this tall that are growing below the, the stubble. That's all that light green in there, and that's what I'm trying to kill right now. Let's, uh, let's try to get our cruise control going here so I can not run real running the throttle. Let's do right there. There we go. Okay, cruise is working. We're going a little faster than what I want, but that's okay. Just started watching, and I love the videos. Thank you, Hunter Gray. Appreciate it, man. I it's fun making videos. Sometimes you don't know what content to come up with and what to make. And other times I feel like I should always be out there with a the camera filming everything possible so I can have content to turn into a video. But uh, live streams are nice because this is reality. I'm live right now. You guys are watching this happen. There's no uh, there's no editing in this video. It's uh, the only editing I can do is hit the stop button. So but yeah, it works out good. Okay, well, everything's running pretty good here. We're cruising at about 16 miles an hour. That's that's okay. 1,500 RPM, 1,600 RPM right in that ballpark. And we're putting on five gallons an acre. Uh, we've already put on about 100 gallons of chemical. <laughs> so let's see here. What's, uh, what's happening for you guys? Love your videos. Thank you. Love your big buds. I do too. They're great machines. We're going to grab some water here. Camera around. They, they need a bigger button there. Just downshifting on me. Here we go. Come on. All right, I'm just got to hold the camera. I think for now. It's nice putting in that thing. There's an old uh, kind of a road right here that we use to drive up the fields, and this can be a little bumpy. So I'll usually uh, got to slow down for this. Otherwise, it shakes the sprayer up pretty good. Just drive through nice and slow. There's a couple big ditches in this field up here too I gotta watch out for. I've already hit them earlier. I didn't expect them. <clears throat> that runoff this spring with all the snow that melted on some of this flat ground, you wouldn't think so. It cut a couple ditches in this field and I didn't see it one time. I was messing with my GPS here and I hit it and it, you know, it rocked me good. I about head hit the ceiling. I, I felt so bad for this thing. That's one of the worst things I hate is hitting ditches when you don't expect them. Like there's one right there. I'm kind of going slow through it. An estimated time of harvest. Good question. You know, at the stage that the wheat's in right now, and the way our peas are looking, our peas are flowering right now. We'll probably flower for about another two weeks if we get good weather. Uh, I would say the end of end of July we'll probably be harvesting peas, and then the first or second week of July, of August we'll be in our spring wheat at this rate. <laughs> if it still stays cold and uh, wet, it might even be uh, might even be later now. Uh, thank you, Zach, for subscribing. Appreciate it, buddy. That's awesome. You should big make big Brutus next. <laughs> big Brutus, nice. I like that. Can you put your map on the mod hub? I actually cannot do that. That is done by Giants. Giants have control when the map goes on. And I actually don't have. A lot of guys think that I'm kind of the one in control of the Welker Farms map. I'm not actually. Uh, Mappers Paradise. Those are the guys that have the. No, they made the map. They have the rights to it. I have the map uh, because obviously I got to let them know if there's things that need changed or if I need to make a video for them or whatnot. And if I want to play it, you know, that's it, right? Uh, I'm driving around a water hole right here. Let me flip it over. It's always something to change the camera. So here's a, there's a nice little puddle of water in the field. So I'm going to go ahead and just spray a lap around this because uh, that way I can turn around. So we're going to mark. You can 
you see these weeds are pretty yellow. There's not a lot growing here. I sprayed this kind of late. This was Lentils last year. And uh, when I sprayed this, they, some of them are dying. Some of these are kind of showing a little bit of green and it makes me nervous. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray it anyways because uh, the last thing you want is weeds to survive being sprayed because that's how they become resistant to chemical. So we're gonna nail them again and hope that they, uh, it really knocks them back. As far as the map goes, guys, all I can say is there's going to be some pretty big announcements coming really soon. So hang tight. Just uh, just know it's going to be worth it. But there's going to be some pretty big surprises. I think you guys are all going to be pretty excited for what's to come. So definitely just hang in there and uh, keep an eye out on uh, Mappers Paradise on their Facebook, on Instagram, as well as my channel. And... Uh, and their Discord server too, if you go to their Discord server. You see the tire tracks here? These are my old tire tracks. See the stuff growing in them? It makes me wonder if there's stuff growing in here because A, I was kicking up too much dust and the chemical didn't hit these plants, or B, the tires pushed the weed seeds that were sitting on the surface and pushed them into the soil, which caused them to germinate and grow. My, my thoughts are probably the second. I bet you that's what happened, why there's weeds growing in here. But you can see, yeah, the tire tracks, there's uh, there's definitely uh, more growing there. So I'm spraying along the edge of the crop right now. I've got the one nozzle just right on the very edge there. Hope to catch all the weeds. The wind's blowing slightly to the east. So I can see my dust drift that way. So I know that I'm not drifting into that field. If it did switch directions and drift, it would fry that spring wheat because we've got a bunch of Roundup in here. Um, I'm putting on a mixture of... Uh, Roundup and uh, LV6, which I believe is a type of uh, 240E. I'm going a little fast here, I need to slow down. Okay, and I'm not running auto steer at this point because I set the line for the other side of the field. So I'm, uh, I'm just, uh, running it by hand. Here's that road again right here I gotta slow down for. The one problem with driving through a field is uh, when it rains the water runs down the tire tracks and when it runs down the tire tracks it slowly erodes the tire tracks out. So then what ends up happening is you get ditches and over time those ditches get bigger and bigger. So that's uh, typically why farmers a lot of times don't like people driving in their fields or at least making uh, established paths is because it'll erode eventually, which will cause problems later on. Oh, let's see here. Hi, uh, can I please get a shout out, Mr. Nice Guy? Well, since you're a nice guy, I'll give you a shout out. Uh, do I have a 1586? I don't know what a 1586 is, so I'll say no. I don't think we have a 1586. Is anyone else hear a high loud pitch noise or like a stuck seatbelt or alarm or is it just me? Well, the turbo is kind of squealing in the background. You might be hearing the turbo. The other high pitch squealing sound that you probably are hearing is the water pump. The water pump is, uh, is, is pumping the pressure for all our water here and it makes a really high pitched kind of squeal in the background. Um, if I were to stop, I could turn it off for you and then the sound would probably go away. So it's either probably the turbo or the water pump. There goes a jackrabbit. They're fast. There's another bit of water right over here in the field. I'll probably drive right through that. So you guys will get to see me A, either get stuck or uh, or punch through it. Okay. Getting close to finishing up the edge of this field here. Let me uh let me clip this phone back in here. this in I cannot there we go my thumb is too big or something I can't get it to change the camera over uh, so yeah everything's going pretty good though the farm is looking good except for I see I have a nozzle leaking down there I'm gonna have to fix that when we get to the end 
leaking like that. We're gonna go take a look at that in a second, guys. I can see it spraying, spraying chemical out the way it should be. Actually, I've got a couple that are like, what's my pressure at? My pressure too high, maybe? Let me slow down a little bit here. See if that makes it good. Huh. The number of those that are doing that. sound you were probably talking about. Um, I don't have my gloves with me either. Let's go take a look. Let's see if we can find him. Alright. I saw a couple right here that were kind of spraying funny. We just put new nozzles on this. They're all brand new. The old ones were uh, getting kind of wore out. They were plastic. They weren't the stainless steel tip. These ones have stainless steel uh, tips on them. But these few that are leaking right here, something's kind of funny about them. You can see how it's spraying. I don't know why I'd be doing that. And I had a set of gloves in my sprayer and they're not there anymore. Why are we leaking? This is the hard part about spraying by yourself without having another person is I can't be in the cab to turn it on to see where the spray is coming out. This one, something's funny with that one. And then let's take a look over here. One of these was spraying all over the place too. I think it was uh, this one. It looked like it was coming out of the side of the nozzle here. Let's see if I can take this off check it. I might have to put this phone down. I think, guys, I don't think I can do this without. Well, maybe I will. I keep the thing off. Come on. There we go. It's got the O-ring in it. Let's put it back on. We'll tighten her up. Huh. I don't know why that one was spraying funny, too. It... It uh, looks good, this one too. Weird, all right, well, I was wondering if maybe my pressure was a little high. I was running about 70 PSI. These nozzles can take that, but maybe that was a bit much. But it it shouldn't be leaking where it was leaking. It was spraying, spraying product out in kind of a weird spot. Let's just go, let's try another pass here and see what it does. They have a really fine hole on them, and if you got a little needle, you can poke, poke it, and uh, if there's anything obstructing the, the port on them, you can uh, clean it out. Let's see, let me poke my uh, power back into my phone so I don't run out of ju juice here. Okay, I'm going to put you guys back up in the camera holder while I kind of get this figured out. start this up again. right in the back so I can't hardly even see them. Looks like it's spraying out of that. I 
mean is a, like a spray hose of water on it. And I can, some of these times these sprayers have a, have a clean tank on them. We don't have any on this. I do have a water jug in here I can use. I don't know who took my gloves out of here. I had a set of gloves in here. I will, uh, I gotta take a look at that. So, um, let's see. Can I do this for you guys? There, you can watch me down there for a second. I bring you with me, but it's kind of hard holding the phone, so hang on a second. See if that fixes it. I don't know, the O-rings might be a little old. We use some of the old O-rings when we put these new ones on. Maybe they're just not sealing tight. You might guess. It was working fine this morning. I didn't see any of this going on, so. Hard to say. Well, let me uh, we'll start spraying here. We'll see what it does. I took them off, flipped the O-ring around, put it back on. Sometimes that can uh, help it seal. Still spraying all over the place. I think I need a. I don't have any tools to clean that one. I got nothing to. Don't find picks or anything in here, so I might have to run back to the shop, which is not far from here. Wing this thing out. And clean that up because that's not going to do a very good job. So let me. Uh, we got to take this thing back to the shop. All right, that's too bad. winger up here. Something's going on. I don't know. It's, uh, I can't have them doing that because if they're not, if they're not, uh, applying it accurately like it should be, 
then what'll happen is you won't get good coverage and uh, some weeds will survive. So I'll go back and get some gloves on too because I don't like touching these things with my hands. So anyways, while I was swinging up, I'm going ahead and swinging the whole sprayer up. Uh, let's see here. This is my first line with you. Awesome. Taden. Uh, Privet from Russia. I'll let the spray everywhere here. Lots of ground to cover. Yeah, we got lots of ground to cover here too. Nick, what happened to Walker Farms Inc. for Pharmacy Simulator 17? Uh, it's coming. It's coming. It's just, it was in testing for a long time and uh, it's on the very verge of getting fully approved. So yeah, hang on there. Let's see here. Okay, we're winging her in. And then I'll run it back to the shop. We'll take a look at this and find out what's going on. I'm gonna wing it out when I get back to the shop. This always takes a little while. And then I gotta take, get, I gotta get a pick is what I need. I gotta get a little fine needle of some kind. I can sit there and I can clean them out. The problem is, is every time it gets caked with dirt and dust around the edge of the nozzle body. And when you go to take them off and you pull them off, all that dirt falls down inside of them. And there's nothing you can do about that but clean it with water. And I don't have any of that with me. Okay, there we go. Let's go back to shop. Put her in fast here and run back. <laughs> Stuff like this that slows down the slows down the farming. There we go. So we'll see what we can do. We can figure out what that nozzle's going on there. I don't know. I'm tempted just to flip them over to my old nozzles, which is what I should probably do, to be honest. I'll grab something. We'll try it. If it doesn't work, I'm going to go to the other nozzles and we're just going to spray with the original ones. The reason I we switched it over to these, these are air induction nozzles. They use, uh, they actually uh, will, they have uh, little air ports in it. It changes the way the droplets go through the nozzles, so it keeps becoming a fine mist, which drifts really bad. Uh, with typically, and the old nozzles I used were fan jet nozzles. And those are known for drifting really bad. They're good coverage, but they drift really bad. So, we were hoping since we're spraying extra crop to use these, but somehow reason they're plugging on me or something. So I'll run back here. I'm gonna grab, we'll grab a tool. We'll try to fix it. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna spin them all over and turn them to the the other size nozzles. We're just gonna use those instead because I want to spray. I don't really want to mess with changing nozzles in and out. It's really easy. They're all on there. All I gotta do is just twist the nozzle body and it changes it over to matter of minutes, so it's not, not hard to do. some stuff and we'll go back out to the field. Alright, I'll just take you with me. Alright. Go inside here. I might lose you guys. The uh, signal drops off when I go in the shop, so we'll see how long. There's my gloves. There they are. It's the handoff. To this hand too. I'll take these and let's get a pick of some kind. We need something fine. Yeah, what's the best pick here? 
That one's got a pretty fine tip on it, so does that one. That one's kind of bent though a little bit. What's that? Those are all like, there we go, that one's, uh, that one's bent too. Let me straighten this out. We have a tool here somewhere that we uh, use for this, but I have no idea where it's at. So, where can I put this phone? <laughs> I need my other hand. Let's just lean it up like this. There you guys go. You can watch me. I'm just gonna. I wasn't gonna use the vice, but I'll just tap it. Great. There we go. Perfect. See? Straighten her out. She was kind of crooked. Okay, so I got gloves. I've got a pick. Um, I'm going to get a little thing of water here. Actually, I have a bucket in the sprayer. Let me grab that. I'm going to put some water in it. Because I don't feel like winging this thing out here and doing it here. I'm going to do it in the field. So I don't have to double wing it and do it again. So let's put this. We'll put the tool in here. Put this right there. Let's put our gloves in here. I'm gonna grab our little ice fishing buddy seat bucket here. Let's put a little water in this. I'm gonna use this to wash the nozzles out when I drop them off. Since I have a bucket, I might as well have it. Okay. Let's see which one's on. That one's off. We don't need a lot, just enough to junk the nozzles in so I can get the mud off of them when I'm out there. Put that back on. Perfect. Doubles as a, a seat and a bucket of clean water. Back to the field. Okay. Break and break off. Put her in drive. That's why it's nice spraying real close to the farm like that. Make sure I don't hit anyone coming onto the road here. These trees stick out so far now. Get really, uh, Look before you pull out, otherwise you might sideswipe someone. We've got 1,400 gallons of product on here right now. It's a little heavy. I can feel it moving the sprayer around. We're doing 40, 42 miles an hour right now, 43. Good speed. Where is leg arms at? Leg arms is in the field right now. He's uh, he's in the other sprayer, the Apache, and he's currently spraying at the moment. He's finishing up the little bit we have left on the crop to spray. There's a bunch of uh, canola growing over there. A neighbor of ours looks really nice. I don't know a lot about canola, but I'd say that's a nice canola field. We might get introduced to that in a year or two. Maybe next year we might try growing some. We should, really should. I think there's uh, definitely benefits to doing it. A lot of guys are doing it around here. And uh, typically when other farmers are doing it and it's catching on, it must mean it's a good thing. So we'll keep doing that. Oklahoma Farming. Hey, I love the channel. Can I get a shout out? Yes, you can. Two bucks. Thank you, Oklahoma. Appreciate it, man. Look at all my tire tracks here. It's not even an approach there. I've just been driving off the road. <laughs> The brew can handle it. Thank you, Oklahoma farmer. That is very nice of you. All right, I'm gonna wing it out here. We're gonna fix those nozzles. If we can't get them fixed, if they keep leaking, I'm gonna switch them over to the other nozzles because I don't feel like fighting it, so. Wing this out. Are those big buds not too heavy with uh, on soil compaction. Um, no, they're not bad at all with soil compaction. I mean, if you drive over really wet ground, I'm sure they'll pack. But uh, they're about 50,000 pounds. 
So you figure 50,000 pounds on eight tires. And they're pretty good sized tires, so. Grow hemp, that's actually a possibility. Someday we might grow hemp on this farm. It's uh, slowly making its way through the legal process. Some guys were able to grow it last year, only a couple. But there's definitely a market for it uh, if it can be get approved through the government and everything, because hemp is not marijuana. It's very similar, but it's not. And so we can grow it. And I, I hear it does really well in this climate, so that'd be pretty cool to grow hemp someday. We'll see, who knows. I'm a new sub from the UK, I love your channel. Could you please tell me my first name? My first name is Nick, N-I-C-K. Okay, let's lower this boom down. I'm assuming that it's just those ones I saw. It's hard to say the ones that are behind the sprayer that they're leaking too, I don't know. So we're just gonna take a chance and hope that, uh, hope I get the right ones. Okay, let's go fix this stuff. I need my bucket of water. I'm gonna put a glove on. Actually, if you guys don't mind, let me uh, put this in here real quick. I put my gloves on. Bought these for a reason, right? Let's see if I can hold that phone up these things. There we go. That's better. Okay, so I got my glove. Now. <laughs> Can I change the camera with these gloves? I don't think I can. Let me use my hand here. I'm going to leave it on the front, uh, forward-facing camera while I do this, because that's probably the best angle to have it on. Put this back over here real fast while I... You guys make this so difficult for me. As if it's not my fault. All right, let's go fix those things. I think it was uh, this one right here. Pull it off the bucket. There we go. So I'm going to do a couple of these because I'm not sure which one it was. So let's gonna take the whole thing off. Just put it in the water here. Let me look at this thing up close. That one's clean. I don't see anything blocking that one. It's got a filter up inside there. I'll leave that filter in there. Rinse it off a little more. Put that back on. Herbicides are typically not, they're not toxic to humans in the fact that if you get on your hands, it's gonna give you cancer right away or anything. I, you know, a lot of this stuff, it's hard to say what the long-term effects are, but rule of thumb is if you can avoid getting skin contact, that's best. They're not like a pesticide where it's top, like, you know, lethal to humans. This stuff is only lethal to plants. I wouldn't drink it, but <laughs> it's good to have gloves on. That one there, I'm looking down it. That one's good too. I don't know why that is doing that. Let's screw that one on. Let's do the next one here. I'm just gonna do a few of these on each side here because I don't know which one is really giving me the trouble. Now that one there has got something. Yep, I see something stuck in the end of it. So, let me um, I'll take my phone here. You guys are gonna look at the sky for a second. Where's my, my tool, there it is. I hope this is uh, small enough to fit in there. It, out. it was like a little pebble or something got stuck up in it. Let me rinse it off in the bucket again. Yeah, I think it's out now. Okay, I don't know how that got in there. Let's do one more while we're at it, and then we'll go to the other side. That one looks like it's got something in it too. Huh. That's odd. I don't know why, these are brand new. We got filters on them and everything. There's something down in there, so. Well, let me put you guys in the sky again. Let's see if I can pick this out. It's like a dentist. There we go. Okay. 
Okay. All right, let's go to the other side. That's good enough for here. So there was a number of them over here that were doing it. I'll start with uh, start with this one. That one's clean. I can see through it. I'm just looking to see if I see daylight through the nozzle there. And if I can, then it's fine. Filter's still in there, so let's put it back in. Let's try this one. That one's clean. There we go. That one's stiff. Don't want to come off. This one might take two hands. There we go. Got it. That one looks clean. And we lost our filter on that one. There it is. These are the little filters that go in there. Little screens. You can see. It's a little wire mesh. And it's the last, last hope in preventing junk from getting in there. I'm gonna hold this camera kind of funny here while I put this in. It's gonna take two hands. There we go. Okay. That's good. Check this one. That one's got something plug in it. It's almost like plastic. It looks like a little white thing. Filter came out with that one too. That's fine. Get the filter right there. Yeah, there's something in that nozzle. That is really weird. These are brand new. Literally, I have less than probably 300 acres on these things. Maybe a little more than that, 400 acres. Let's kind of put the phone down for a second again. This isn't quite fine enough. I can't quite get in there. You know what? I got another tip in the sprayer. I got a spare one. I can clean that later at the shop. Let's go get it. We'll head back. All right. So. I doubt you guys can see it. It's, uh. Yeah, you can't hardly tell. I can't focus like that. There's a little piece of something obstructing it, so I'll put that one in there. Let's get a new one. That's why I have new ones in here. I think we have this other new one just in case. I need it too. There we go. We'll take both of these. back together again so this thing goes through with the tip the cap like so and then put the little uh, o-ring in that's your seal to keep it from leaking everywhere that's what I thought was leaking but I think maybe it's just building up pressure because the nozzle isn't on properly and I take my uh, filter put it in there let me put it in real quick All right. Well, that kind of makes me nervous a little bit on what other ones of these might be doing that. Hopefully that's just it. All I saw were these few right here that were leaking, but I mean, who knows about these back ones here? I can't see those from driving, so it's hard to say. I can kind of inspect them, and if they look wet, real wet around the body, then that, that would mean it's leaking, and these don't look too bad. Look like they're normal. So let's go ahead and let's start spraying. Let's see what happens here. We'll give that a shot. I'm gonna keep this bucket of water because uh, we might be doing this again. If it doesn't work, I'm not getting much progress, then I'm gonna switch the nozzles over to the other style. The twin jet, a twin fan, I can say, twin fan T jets. Is that, uh, I 
know those work. Even though they might drift a little more, they will spray nice. All right, we're back. Put the phone up here. Take uh, my gloves off here. Things get so sweaty after a while. There we go. Whew. Much better. How much battery was? We lost 10% battery life doing that. Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that little thing. Let's, let's see if what I did there fixed it. So I gotta head up the field to where I left off spraying at. I'm driving my tracks here. Let's turn the pump on. Take out a drive real quick. There we go. Boom down. Okay. We're going to intercept my old tire tracks here. We'll see where I turned out. Hopefully this fixes our problem. There's our tire tracks right there. You guys can see them. Turn the auto steer on. I'm gonna track that. There we go. So we're cruising all the next gear here. There we go. Alright, let me watch these things while it kicks on here. There's the spray. Okay, that definitely fixed that problem on that side. Let's check this side. Yeah, it looks good. I don't see anything spraying anywhere like it was. We might have fixed it. Cool, okay. Well, that's good. Awesome. 100 foot booms on Big Brew. Yes, that is true. 100 foot booms. Mimi wants a shout out. <laughs> Isn't that a character on Sesame Street? Mimi? I don't know. I think so. It rings a bell. There's the farm right over there. I'll go to our close up camera here so you guys can get a little better view of the back. So, yeah, that's all in crop along that. So in the future here someday, we might not be doing this, where we can't follow half the farm. This year we probably got about uh, three quarters of the farm in Kemp Fallow. Or sorry, three quarters. <laughs> three quarters of the Kemp Fallow is Kemp Fallow's year. About a quarter we put to peas, yellow peas, and that's kind of the plan anymore. So, but if we can do more of that kind of stuff, I think it's gonna really help. It slows down a little bit more, there we go. Perfect. Greetings from the Netherlands, that's awesome. I'm in Slovenia. Nice, that's pretty far. Hello from the Czech Republic. I have relatives that live in the Czech Republic. My, uh, my sister and brother-in-law are uh, currently in the Czech Republic right now. I think they're by Prague, but I'm not entirely sure on the, the city exactly where they're at. Was Princess Peach and Wonder Woman? I have no idea. How many bin space do you guys have? How many bin space? Well, I don't really know. <coughs> Excuse me. How many grain bins we actually have? I, I know it's between 20 and 30. Uh, probably towards the 30 mark, uh, or more than that. But they all come in different shapes and sizes. So as far as actual storage, you know, we probably can store in grain bins close to 150,000 bushels, something like that. But we definitely need more. We're that's one thing we're lacking right now is storage. We need more storage. Uh, let's see here. Um, John D wants a shout out. All right, thanks John D. Got a shout out. Looks like the sprayer's going good now. We don't have anything leaking everywhere, so I think we're good there. That's good to know. Here's that little uh, road ditch up here that we got to slow down for. Take it back to about a crawl. Just let it kind of work through it. There we go. Get over the bumps here and accelerate. OK. 
Okay. What does it cost to change out nozzles? Each one of these little guys right here, they're about five to five and a half dollars a piece. Five or six bucks is typically what they run. That's US dollars. That's five or six bucks. Um, this, uh, where's that at? Right here. This cap here is about 50 cents. That's what it goes inside of. These O-rings, I don't know what they are. They could be a quarter maybe. 50 cents to a quarter for the O-ring. And then the filter, the screen. It's hard to say what these things run. I actually have never priced them out. I don't think they're terribly expensive, but they're a few bucks. But if you add it all up to change out tips, you're probably looking at about eight or nine bucks, I bet. Maybe at most. Eight dollars to change out per tip, and there's 60 of them. So take eight times 60, and that's what it costs to change or replace all of that. If you're doing just the tips, then it's like five times 60. <laughs> so yeah, it's a few bucks. Here's a ditch up here. This might be that one that I hit that one day that I was talking about earlier. That's not fun to go over. I'm gonna go ahead and slow it down some. This isn't, oh, it's right over there. There it is, yeah. That was, uh, that was a little frustrating nailing that thing at the speed I did uh, a couple, uh, about three weeks ago when I hit that thing. Oh, that was bad. Out of nowhere, just a big washout like that. That runoff was so bad, but why did it wash that little bit out there and then it's not washed out on either side? I don't know. Maybe the ground was softer there. Hard to say. Let's turn our auto steer off. We'll make our turn here. I'm gonna do one of these maneuvers. We'll do a circle here because we got this pattern I'm doing. Always a corner that's hard to get. So that ditch is right in front of me. I'm gonna hand steer it around that thing. See right there, I'm not even gonna drive through it. I don't even want to. I think it was gnarly. Yeah, I nailed that going like 17 miles an hour a couple weeks ago. That woke me up. trying to figure out how to do mapping on my monitor here, how to mark off wild oats and stuff I was growing on it. And I thought for sure this field was nice and smooth because it always is, but that ditch was not there last year and it came out of nowhere and got me good. Let me get my little skip here that I got and then I'll spin around. There we go, we'll get that like that. I'm gonna flip around and I'm gonna get on the other side of that, that ditch so we don't have to go over it again. Let's see what I'm doing here. And almost there. I'm on the other side of the ditch, as you can see. Intercept our line. Right there. You can actually see my tire tracks after I hit it. It wobbles like this because the truck, the auto steer got knocked off so bad when I nailed that thing. And I stopped up here. Yeah, that was frustrating. Where's our farm at? This farm is uh, in north central Montana. We're just south of the Canadian border, about 30 miles south of uh, Canada, and we're uh, right in the middle. About an hour from the Rocky Mountains. The Rocky Mountains are right over here. This is to the west. We're facing south right now. We're heading down towards uh, Wyoming <laughs> at the moment. Let's see here. How's the moisture there? Fairly dry around here. Crops are still looking good. The moisture here is awesome. It's just very, basically this land right here is just now dry on the surface. It was mud yesterday and the day before. We had a huge rain over the weekend. One of the biggest rains we've ever had in one sitting. It rained uh, three and a half inches of rain in about four hours. And that's, uh, that's about a record for us. I don't even remember the last time it did that much rain in that short a time. We've gotten that kind of rain before over a period of like four or five days. Okay, here's another ditch here. Is that, that road would we take? Nice and slow. There we go. Let the cruise control take over. Okay. 
Which AI nozzle are we using? These are the AI, I think they're 11, there it is right there. It's 11 002s. You can read that. AI 11 002 VS. They got the stainless steel tip on them. Pretty good nozzles. They just, they're a little sensitive to get plugged though with stuff, and that's what happened, the other one. We changed all our filters and cleaned everything up before we put them on, but who knows? It's hard to say what gets in those things. It might have even been mud. Does the Big Red have boom section control for trimble? Yes, it does. It's got four sections. Right there, one, two, three, four. <laughs> I wish it I wish it had more, but at this point in time, we decided not to add any more. In the future, we might. We might convert the system over to a, a what do they call it? A, like an aim point kind of control. I think that's what Case calls theirs where each and every nozzle is controlled individually. It's a really sweet system. They're expensive to put on. I don't know, it's probably between 70 and $130,000 to put on the sprayer, so that's why we didn't do it at this point in time. But in the future, we might do that. It might be AIM Command. I think it's AIM Command is what Case uses on their Patriots. Beautiful system, it's awesome. Why don't you guys buy a Klaus Axio 850? Because <laughs> they don't sell them around here. I mean, I don't know anything about them. Sure, it's a good machine though. Farm is right over there again, right to the left. How fast am I going? I'm going 16.3 miles an hour. 15, so roughly 15 to 16 miles an hour, somewhere in that area. So I'm running about 60 psi on my boom. Pressure. Are you using Trimble Field IQ? I think so. I think that's what that is, yeah. This is, it's a Raven Raven controller though, so it might not be Trimble. I know it's a Trimble monitor, Trimble uh, easy steer, but the actual spray controller is down inside underneath this uh, dash here, and uh, it's a Raven system, so <laughs> that might be, <coughs> excuse me, what you got to talk about. I'm still kind of sick from uh, whatever cold thing I picked up over the weekend, so. Ever tried very target nozzles? Using them on my high clearance, 3.5 to 20 gallons, per acre, no plugging. Really? I have not tried those. That'd be awesome. Keegan Adams wants a shout out. How many tractors do you guys have? We've got a few. I don't know the exact number. We just sold one recently. Our Case 8940 Magnum just went off to a new owner. So it's kind of sad to see that tractor go. It's a good tractor, but we just didn't need it. So we'd rather have the money at this point. <coughs> so uh, that tractor pretty much paid for this, this uh, sprayer. But we've got I would say probably five or six tractors running tractors on the farm. A couple that uh, aren't running. Ooh, there's a bit of a bump. Huh, that's an interesting car to be driving on this road. What's he doing on the county road? <laughs> All right, we're getting to the end here. Slow down a little bit. All we big turn. And line it back up again. There we go. Perfect. I'm in Montana. This is uh, just outside of Shelby, Montana is where I'm farming right now. A bunch of badger mounds. You guys can see them right there. I'm going to hit that one here in a second. Well, yeah, a little bit of a bump. Not a fan of badgers. I'm also not a fan of gophers, but badgers eat gophers, so that's good. Uh, what kind of tractor do I have? Well, this is a, this is a mutant tractor is what I'm spraying right now. It's if you call this a tractor. It's a Case Titan that was converted into a sprayer with uh, New Holland parts and uh, Big Bud parts. So yeah, that's what it is. The hat looks great. It's an awesome hat. Awesome glasses on it. This is my very first original hat that I got from the Bunk Farms hat. That was a gift that the ladies did for us for a Christmas gift and then we decided to start selling them. And you guys have been buying them, so thank you. If you guys want hats, I'm not wearing a Welker Farm shirt at the moment. We don't have shirts too. But you just gotta send us an email to welkerfarmsinc at gmail.com. Yep, she's cruising down the road, no problem. Things are going good. Let's see. I wonder if I can set that on the screen down there. 
Uh, da, 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 da. The way to do this, I'm trying to figure this out. I think I did it wrong. Oh, there we go. And how do I type? That one. Done. Done. Okay, there we go. Yeah, there, there's the email on the bottom of the screen. If you guys want hats, shirts, t-shirts, we have uh, hoodies as well. We've got some more merchandise coming. We're just waiting for our website to get built. Our website's finally up and running, then we'll announce the other stuff. So if you guys are interested in that stuff, we've got uh, prices are on our Facebook page. We gotta get a website going. That's the biggest problem, we need a website. I had a website going and then it broke. Uh, no thanks to uh, a site builder. So that was a bummer. Uh, Yo boy Robert, two bucks. Will you ever make Big Brute merchandise? We should. Have not done it yet. Maybe this winter when we get some time, I'll start rolling out some Big Brute merchandise. I don't know, it'd be kind of fun to do something like that. We could figure out a way to make like a hat or a shirt with him. Figure out some kind of slogan, you know. Copy some Chuck Norris, uh, some Chuck Norris slogans. And just substitute Chuck Norris for Big Brute, right? <laughs> Welcome to the, the stream, Danny. Good to have you. Just got home. Nice. Is uh, better than your combine? The class Lexon 600 or 770 is better than your combine. It might be. I have no idea what size combine that that uh, class is at Lexion. It probably is better than our combines. Ours are not considered that big anymore. They were big about 10 years ago, 15 years ago, but they've kind of shrunk in size. And not really shrunk. Other combines have gotten bigger, so. What's the temperature? About 75 degrees right now. 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So pretty good spraying weather, just about right. Can't really complain about that. And what's being sprayed? We're spraying right now, we're doing five gallon work. So that's five gallons per acre of product we're putting down. And out of that product, it's comprised of uh, 32 ounces per gallon of Roundup. So a quart of Roundup and then uh, we're doing eight ounces, I believe, of uh, LV6, which is a type of 248. Oh, I hate when you have to drive through ditches like that. Power of the sprayer, bounces me around. So yeah, that's what we're spraying right now. The temperature is uh, 75 degrees about. I don't have a thermostat in here, otherwise I'd confirm that. I do have my air conditioner running on me right now, so it's hot enough to have air conditioner if that, if that gives you guys any information. When's the 17 map coming out? <laughs> Soon, guys, hang in there. The Farming Simulator map is really close. <laughs> it's practically done. Giants is doing some finishing uh, testing on it. I have a suspicion you guys are gonna see it really soon. When I get the okay to announce some stuff, I'll announce some stuff, but I'm not in control of announcing anything, so when that comes, that, that'll happen. But I guarantee you guys will know. It'll be real soon. I'm sorry it's been taking so long, and I'm sorry I keep saying soon, but it's the truth, <laughs> kind of. I guess when I said soon about three months ago, it wasn't so soon, but it'll be out. Don't worry, guys, it'll be out. It'll be out and it'll be out for everybody. You guys will be able to get it on PlayStation, you'll be able to get it on Xbox, and you'll be able to get it on PC all at the same time. And that's the goal that Mappers Paradise wanted. They wanted to be able to release it to everybody at the same time, so that way there wasn't favorites. The only problem is by doing that, it means it had to be delayed several months. So, sounds like it's hard. Uh, I look like I haven't showered in months. <laughs> days, days, get that right, days. Haven't showered in days. I do have a little bit of scruff I need to take care of. Okay, here's that water hole again. I'm not driving through this thing. Turn it around, get back on our GPS here. We still have a ways to go before we're emptying this thing too. the auto steer. Will the Pharmacy Matter map be brought over to Pharmacy Matter 19? Yo boy Robert, thank you for the donation by the way. Two bucks, I appreciate it man. I don't know, I wish I knew that. It's, I guess it probably depends on how popular the map is. It's a real big hit, everybody loves it. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of demand and outcry for it to be ported over to Pharmacy Matter 19. I, I would bet it will be. I have no idea the process that goes through taking a map and converting it over. 
I was told once from someone who knows that stuff really well, they said that Giants typically makes a way for it to happen. So I would suspect you guys will see it eventually for Farming Simulator 19. I really have no idea how long. I've heard Farming Simulator 19 is not coming out till December. If I'm correct, I think guys are saying December. So that's quite a few months from now. That's like, what, five months or something like that? So yeah, it's, uh, it's still a ways out. But I suspect you guys probably will see it eventually. Monsanto claims Roundup is safe to drink, but a rep refuses to drink a glass full from an interviewer. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't drink a glass full either. Anybody that says any chemical is safe to drink, I would be a little bit concerned. Now, is it safe to drink in a very, very watered down amount? Like say what's in my spray right now? Maybe, I still wouldn't do it. I do believe it's a lot safer than a lot of other stuff out there. But as far as being safe to just take it down in a big glass, I don't think that's true. I wouldn't want to. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, you can drink. I've heard of reps doing that. I've heard there was a rep at one point when it first came out and he would drink a glass of it just to try to prove his point. I have no idea if he's still alive or if he has cancer. That'd be good interesting, a good study to look at. Uh, how many acres are you spraying? Well, we've got about 3,500 to go. I've only done probably like 500 so far so we got a lot left currently in the sprayer right now uh, i haven't used a lot we've got 1,129 gallons and it says area to empty 225 acres left to spray so i'll easily be able to finish this field that i'm on right now i'll be able to move to another field and get a chunk of that done i don't know if i'm going to live stream the whole thing because right now according to my timer which you guys can't see it says right here it says i've been live streaming for an hour and 20 minutes which is quite a while so we'll keep going here i wanted to do a live stream for you guys i haven't done one in a while hopefully the next live stream will actually be in farming simulator i might uh, get a chance to sit down and hook my computer up and uh go at it again in farming simulator that's kind of fun i i don't know part of me wants to take the game seriously and actually try to farm and the other part of me wants to just goof off and have a blast playing it and just i don't know see what happens so you guys probably will love and hate it uh do you cut corn or milo no we don't do either they can't really grow well in this area so we typically don't grow this here i wonder if he's still alive too i don't know <laughs> that's a good question about that guy uh let's see here how do you know when the next pass are you using a foam or markers Shout out please from Houston, currently 99 degrees out. Oh, that's hot. Okay, ML wants to know how I know when my pass is. It's all right here. GPS. The GPS system is mapping this field that I'm on. Let's see here, where am I? Let's zoom in a little bit. Zoom in a little more. So you can see it's mapping at the moment where I'm spraying, so I can see where the end of the field is, which is uh, right up here. There'll be a county road here. So I know when I get close enough, I go ahead and turn off auto steer. I decelerate down, I make my U-turn, flip 180 degrees, intercept my AB line, which is right next to that one, and then I take off again. So that's how that works. Let's go back to overhead. I've got a couple different views here. Let's go to that one. This is a Tremble 2050. The guy is at Triangle Leg in Fort Bend, Montana. That's Triangle Leg Services. Those guys set us up with this system. Check them out. If you guys are anywhere near Montana, they fly to you. Uh, so if you're a couple states over, or even if you're up in Canada, I'm pretty sure those guys will come service you. They'll, they'll go just about anywhere. So if you guys need help getting a system set up, I would definitely give Triangle Leg Services a call. They're, the, they're really good at what they do. So when I get to the end of this field here, I'm gonna turn off the auto steer. I'll hand steer the corner, get blind back up with my AB line. They call those AB lines. And then hit the button again and then it goes. <laughs> wow, yo boy Robert, five bucks. Can you convince me, can you convince the mod to make the map with Big Brood? Oh, that's gonna be a tough one. <laughs> I appreciate it, man, for the bucks. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and turn around here and then I'll keep answering your question there. Flip around. Almost there. Auto steer on. Okay, back to your question. Ah, uh, that's a good question. 
Well, I'll tell you this right now, uh, yo boy. I know there are several guys working on bringing this machine, Big Brute, to Farming Simulator. <laughs> I think some are probably looking better than others, but I, I'll just, all I'll say is, I've seen some pictures of some models being made, and they look really good. So, I'm pretty sure when the time's right, you guys will get to see a couple of these. So, just hang tight. There's a good chance that you will be able to run this sprayer in the game one way or another. You'll have options, I'm sure, just like Big Buds, you know. Some of those guys have made different models of the Big Buds, so you guys might get a chance, but yeah. Hang tight, I think there's gonna be some announcements made on that soon, so, yeah. All right, roughly how much was the Big Brew from start to finish? How long was it or how much was it? We figure it costs us around $40,000, $40, give or take, to build the sprayer. Uh, as far as time frame, we started roughly in the beginning of January and we finished like May. <laughs> Right when we started seeding, it's still not quite done yet. There's things we gotta do to this thing. It's got some oil leaks, some fuel leaks, some water leaks. It, it needs, there's some updates that need to happen to this thing. Oop, I'm in some mud right now. Just slow down. See the water right here? I don't know if I'm gonna drive through that. That might get me stuck. We'll see when we get to it. I might, I might bust through it. Anyways, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's typically, uh, what we figure. So, we did have ideas and parts lined up and stuff before January of this year, so it might have even been longer, but we did work at it really hard. It was almost every day we were in the shop working on this thing. It's amazing how much work goes into building something like this, especially with three guys that don't normally do this. If we were uh, actual equipment manufacturers, I'm sure we could have done it a lot faster with the right equipment and everything, but I mean, we're just farm boys putting the equipment together, so. Uh, Longford Lad, hello, watching from Ireland. Love your streams, thank you. I appreciate it. Ireland, that'd be a fun place to visit someday. Appreciate the two bucks, those look like two euros. Thank you. MTS Becco, five euros. I saw your last farming stream. You should keep up the real high, real thing. Ha, <laughs> that's awesome. Yes, I think I will do another one of those streams. I definitely will, so yeah, hang in there. There'll be one eventually guys will like them they'll be good so yeah thank you for the five five euros i appreciate it i think that's euros correct me if i'm wrong and uh yeah i will have another one of those videos soon it might rain tomorrow if it rains tomorrow and i can't do much work at like spraying i'll probably jump on my computer and do a live stream for you guys so it's uh you just gotta find time gotta find time to do that kind of stuff but it was fun i'll do it again you guys enjoyed it i had like 1200 people watching me play that game so <laughs> it was obviously kind of fun We'll do it again. And I got some cool uh, cool mods that guys have sent me to try out, so I think you guys will appreciate it. Uh, yeah, you bet big ML, no problem. It's very hot and most miserable. I can imagine, 90 degrees is not fun. 99 degrees is not fun. I think about 80 degrees is my cutoff. Anything above 80 degrees, I start thinking it's a little too hot out, so. How much money do I make a year? About $15 million. About $15 million a year is what we make. After taxes, it ends up being about 10 bucks. So, ooh, that's a big bump. I tried to slow it down. I didn't want to kick the cruise control off, but uh, oh, those bumps are terrible. I hate those things. Anyways, where was I? <sighs> okay, that was that tire track in the field a while back. I was telling you guys that we drive across. It wasn't even that deep. It was probably like four or five inches deep max, about two feet across. But all it takes is something like that right for the tires to hit, this whole rig bounces. So otherwise it's a pretty smooth ride. Uh, how much money do I make a year? You know, that can vary a lot depending on the crop. It all depends on how well our crops are. If we get a big year and a lot of crops, I'll probably make more money. If we get a low year and our crops aren't that great and we're barely paying our bills, I probably won't make a lot of money. But we don't make a killing, I'll tell you that. We're not like millionaire farmers that make a ton of money. Not a lot of farms do in this area. There's definitely some guys that are well off, but you could make, I can make a lot more money personally doing something else than farming. There's a lot of jobs out there. I could go to North Dakota right now and probably make double what I make here working on oil rigs, you know, or uh, work for a mine somewhere. Or you go back into aviation. If I went back into aviation, I don't know, it's probably too late now. I think I'm above the age, but if I would have went in air traffic control like I was originally going to do, you know, that could make a 
150 grand or more a year doing that. So yeah, there's a lot of opportunity to make more money than there is in farming. But I love farming, farming's fun. And uh, I'd rather take a pay cut with the lifestyle of farming than, uh, than make a lot of money and not be on the farm. So, but there is, a, there is potential. There is always potential to have a bumper crop here. If you have stuff paid for, you're caught up on your bills and everything, there's, a, there's always potential to put some money away. But typically when farmers make a lot of money, they just spend it as fast as they make it because they need new combines, they need a new tractor, they need a new air drill, they need a bigger shop, they need more grain bins. So it's real easy. If we made if we made $2 million this year in just pure cash, $2 million bucks, which would be a gigantic year for us, but if we made $2 million gross right across the top, or I should say net, we could spend it like that, easy. We'd put up a bunch of new grain bins, we'd build a new shop, we'd upgrade a bunch of our equipment, We'd probably get some bonuses on it as far as ourselves. I mean, we could spend that whole amount in just a matter of uh, matter of months, easy. Would we want to do all that? Probably not. We'd probably do a bunch of upgrades and build a couple green bins and then put the rest in the bank account, whatever's left over that Uncle Sam doesn't take from us. And then that would be a rainy day fund for future uh, disasters or crops that don't go well. Because uh, you typically, uh, if you can, Smart farming is having some cash in the bank if possible. So that way, if you have a bad year, you can survive the next. So, all right, let's see here. Okay, all steers are still working. Cruise control is working. We're good. All right. Do you have any clean spray nozzles after each? Oh, do you have to clean the spray nozzles after each application? Uh, kinda. Depends what I'm spraying. It all depends on what you're spraying. If I'm spraying crop, like Sam spraying my the, the spring wheat, and I just got done camp following. Yes, we have to clean them out because there is Roundup residue in the nozzles that needs cleaned out. We typically flush the system. If I am going from broadleaf spraying in the wheat, so say I've already been spraying the wheat and I had broadleaf chemical, and I go to camp follow, I don't need to do it because in camp follow, I'm trying to kill everything. So who cares what's in the nozzles? It's probably going to help kill the weeds that are growing right now. So no. So like this sprayer was spraying a crop about uh, a couple days ago. Now it's spraying chem follow. We didn't have to change anything over to do this. It was uh, it was just real easy. Just fill her up with the next chemical and take off. But if I go back to crop, which I won't anymore this year, this thing's done spraying crops this year, so yeah. What's your dream tracker and car? Dream tractor. Tractor, okay, dream tractor. Oh, the Big Bud 747 probably. That's my dream tractor. I'd love to have the Big Bud 747. New tractor, if you were to go new, I'm, I've never driven one, but I'd really like to try out the Case Quad Track, like a 620. That would be pretty fun to try out something like that. I think, uh, I think those are pretty good machines. Here's that ditch again. We're gonna go as slow as we can through this thing. Let the tires just drop in it. This thing is rough. There we go, now I can speed up with you. across those things. Jake Boss is in the house. Hey Jake, welcome. Are you using a just a Jovance? A Jovance? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what that is, so I guess I can't say. Watching from 9R while spraying the field. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Get it done. It's funny how many of you guys are out farming too and watching me farm. <laughs> that seems kind of you gotta love farming if you do that, but I guess I've done that too. Watch farming videos while farming, so I'm just as much to blame. Blame. All right, let's see here. Manchester, UK, loving the stream. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Can you smack people around in farming simulator? <laughs> I don't know, but the last farming simulator I played, I uh, had a little bit of a collision with some equipment in the yard, so I guess I can smack equipment around. Let's see here. The GPS and RTK system. This one is not. I don't know if you're talking about yours, but as far as this one, no. This one's using WAS. Uh, or no, no, sorry. It's a range point. Yeah, you're right. It is RT. RTX. RTX, not RTK. RTX. I'll show you here. We're using range point. RTX. We've got uh, 13 satellites, which is kind of low. Typically, I'm around 15 to 17. I've seen as high as 18 satellites, but it's enough to maintain 
auto steer here. Well, I have to go soccer practice. Have a great day. Awesome. Catch you later. All right, let's see here, guys. I'm coming up on this water hole. I'm really tempted to just drive through the thing. <laughs> I don't know if it's a good idea. I should probably drive around most of it. There's a big water hole over here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut through this here. It's amazing what this thing can do. I'm sure I could get it stuck if I really tried, but... Oh, look at that. That's a lot of water there. Let's steer around that. I don't really feel like driving through that. If the water's been sitting there long, it might be pretty deep in the mud, so let's just uh, we'll floor it here. Drifting sideways. Oh boy. Come on, girl. Keep going, keep going. We're making it, we're making it. Just flooring it, ripping the tires back there. Oof, made it. That was some muddy tracks back there. I don't know if you guys can see my tracks. Look at that. I'm gonna spray around this water hole so I don't have to go through it again. I was slowing down pretty good there. We'll get kind of close. Oh, it's wet here too. Oh no. We downshift in the keep it third here. Oh, I'm just keep going, girl. Keep going. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're making it. We're making it. We're throwing mud everywhere. I'm just gonna have to wash this thing. Gotta get these weeds. It's all about getting the weeds. I'm just, I'm just, my, my foot's in the pedal hard. Got rooster tails going on back there. Even the ducks are flying away. some mud tracks for you. We'll bust through this one more time and I'll get back on my 80 line. Who needs four wheel drive? There we go. Okay, we're out. Yeah, that was easy. Nothing to worry about. It's the brute we're talking about here. <laughs> there was a moment there I was getting a little worried. You can kind of feel it. You guys that run big equipment and mud, you know that feeling when you start to feel it slowing down. You can know the tires are spinning. And you go, I don't know if I'm going to make this. But fortunately, uh, I've got 916 gallons on here, so I'm a little lighter. I'm not full. These big tires, you know, it's why, it's, it's why this truck's called a floater. That's what really happens. It, uh, it floats. So there we go. Okay, the boom is really muddy. I'm gonna have to pressure wash this thing off when we, <laughs> after a couple days here, I'll go through and wash it. That's probably why those nozzles got plugged. Maybe some dirt got back up in it. No, I don't think that's possible. All right, let's see here. Yeah, the big brute has only been stuck once. You guys almost witnessed number two. Oh, here comes our neighbor in a sprayer. He's bringing his. This, the sprayer this guy's got coming here is the exact same sprayer pretty much that, that I have on Big Brew right now. He, uh, it's very similar. It's a case version of it, but it's basically the exact same sprayer that, uh, that, uh, I've got right now. We'll drive up here. We'll go by him so you guys can see him. So when you see this tractor go by, this guy's a case tractor he's got. And, uh, his sprayer that he's pulling behind is the exact same thing that's on the back of this brute. It's just got duels on it, which ours didn't. Mr. Payon. There he goes. Okay. He's going to go get it done like we are. All right, we'll enter in over here. Line up our GPS here. You guys can see me. Let me change my camera view. There we go. Let's turn on the cruise control. Okay. There we go. Okay, we're rolling again. All right, sorry guys, I missed a bunch of comments there. You committed and got stuck, it's going good. All right, let's see here. Would you trade the oldest, worst condition big bud for a case quad track? Uh, probably not. 
because there's not a lot of value in an oldest worst big bud. I mean, if we could get $50,000 out of our oldest big bud, that'd be a lot. And a case quad track for a really nice one, you're looking at three to $500,000, maybe even upwards of uh, $600,000 if you want to get the big one. So forty dollars to $50,000 doesn't make that big of a dent in a case quad track. So at that point, we'd keep the big bud just because we love big buds and it's kind of a collection and we would just buy a, buy a quad track outright. So I highly doubt we'll ever trade a big bud off. I think we'll always keep them. The day might come that we do get a, a new tractor like that. You never know. I'm not gonna say we never will. You know, we'll upgrade our big buds as long as we can, but there could be a day, there's that water hole. So yeah, we'll, we'll just keep our tractors and then if we ever did get a quad track, we would just buy, buy it separately. Get my tracks. It's already got water in my tracks. Just a little bit of mud. That's a spot there that can't drain out. It's kind of a bowl in the bowl in the ground there. There's no drainage on it. Is it hard to get unstuck? Well, it all depends how stuck you get in the first place. If I just lightly get stuck, no, it's really easy. You just gotta bring another tractor in. We got a long cable, we just hook onto the front. There's big old tow hooks in the front of this thing and the back. You just hook onto it, just lightly pull and it'll come right out. If you bury it though up to the frame and some like an alkali patch or some kind of a saline seep. There's kind of almost like quicksand basically out here. They're bottomless, they call it. It's just a mud that goes down, you know, 10, 15 feet and it'll suck a whole truck in. So if you get in one of those, you're in trouble. But I haven't done that. Um, hello from Ireland, don't get stuck. Good call, I'm gonna avoid that. We don't wanna get stuck. I've only gotten her Big Brute stuck once, so I need to change that. Trimble, I need to put Big Brute right there. Nah, it's okay, we'll leave it Trimble. But we need, I need a logo in here somewhere that says Big Brute. And uh, someone sent us uh, a new pole cord for Big Brute. I've been meaning to give the person credit and show them, give them a shout out for it, but I haven't put it on yet. So if you're watching the stream right now and you sent us one, we got it. I just gotta get to making a video, a little bit of fan mail, I guess you could say we could do. Open up some fan mail and I'll put that on there. And yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a really nice hand woven air horn rope. I love it. So get rid of this chintzy thing. I watched Farmer in Northern Michigan operate one of those huge valley irrigation sprayers across the field. It was pretty impressive. That's awesome. <laughs> That's always fun to watch. Drain tile. No, we don't have drain tile here. For one, to put drain tile in this area would cost us about, if we did the whole farm in drain tile, if it's a thousand bucks an acre, we got 10,000 acres, add that up. What is that, $10 million? So $10 million to put uh, drain tile across all this farm, it's not worth it. It does not benefit us at all. And we don't get enough water to even make drain tile worth it. So, but in definitely some parts of the country, drain tile is awesome and it works really good and I see why the farmers do it. It's just not a, not a crop that, uh, or not a crop, uh, a practice that would make sense here. There's that ditch I'm driving through. There we go. One more little ditch here. Perfect. I've got a buddy who buried their big burst tile and they pulled it out with his old Ford truck. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, get a windshield. Uh, sticker big brew. That'd be awesome. A windshield sticker would be sweet. There's hardly any weeds growing on this right here at all. It feels almost kind of pointless spraying it, but there's a couple little guys hiding in there, so we gotta get them. I don't know if you guys have seen uh, those uh, systems called like uh, Weed It. That's a uh, weed, as in like the plant weed, weed, and then IT. Look it up. They're pretty cool. They're very expensive, but they uh, they individually fire nozzles. It actually detects the weeds as you go over it, and it'll shoot just a quick shot of chemical, and it only nails the plant. And you can save a tremendous amount of chemical. It's good environmentally, it's good on your pocketbook, and it's really good for killing weeds, but uh, it's also very expensive. Big Root Sun Visor, right here. I never use it, though. It's kind of hard to see through, so I always keep it, fold it up. But yeah, Big Root sticker would be fun. We'll, we'll figure it out, we'll get some stuff made. How's the family? The family's doing really good. My little girl is uh, awesome. She's absolutely adorable and just 
just makes every day a joy. And uh, for uh, my wife is uh, not far off from having our second baby. So when that happens, yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be pretty crazy on the, on the farm for a while, but uh, I'll make it. So okay, we're getting to the end here. Let's flip around. Fortune of the wind is being very cooperative today. It's not blowing very much at all, which is very nice for this kind of spraying. There we go. Um, how much rain have you gotten? We got five inches in the last two weeks. That's a good rainfall. Uh, last two weeks for us, we've gotten about four, oh, four and a half inches, four and a quarter, something like that. So not far off from you. That's a lot for us, though. That's more than we usually get. We usually don't get nearly that much rain. So congratulations to the baby. I appreciate it. It's going to be pretty awesome. Number two. It is number two. We don't know what it is yet, if it's a boy or a girl. We'll find out shortly. About a month or so. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, pretty exciting. I'm going to downer that's gonna happen right right before harvest or it could even happen during harvest so yeah it's gonna make life busy but it'll be okay so if I disappear off uh, YouTube and uh, social media for a little while that's why kind of a work maternity leave now I'm sure I'll be on here a lot if it's during harvest please remove phone holder from windshield <laughs> but I need it so I can do this and if I have to re-stick it, it's a pain. The only downside of that is I can't really read what you guys' comments because you're so way up there, right? Thumbs up, Nick. Thank you. Farmer Center 19 will come fall 2018. I've heard that. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. That's going to be fun to see what they do to the game. Obviously, they're adding John Deere to the mix. So uh, a lot of people are pretty excited for John Deere. I'm sure there'll be other companies to follow, too. Actually, there's a big film right here. I'm slowing down for it. Consumer of our wheat. Our wheat typically ends up in Asia somewhere. It's uh, my water bottle's crushed in, as you guys can see. Look at that. <laughs> Gotta pull that lid out. There we go. Got it. Perfect. The seat sometimes crushes it. Uh, typically, our wheat always goes to the Pacific somewhere. So it uh, ends up on a train. The train takes it to the West Coast, which is either Portland probably or Seattle, most likely Portland. It's then uh, loaded on a big barge, a giant ship, and that big ship takes it off to Japan, you know, Korea, a lot of the, maybe in the Philippines. I know China, I believe, buys some of our wheat on and off. So uh, a lot of the, the Asian countries over there is typically where our products go. Not everything, but most of it does. So we're kind of at the mercy of their markets and uh, exporting. Exporting there. Do you fly a crop duster when you're not using big fruit? No, we don't. We haven't had a crop duster uh, spray our farm in a long time. We have in the past had a crop duster, but uh, no. And I personally don't know how to fly a crop duster. I know how to fly airplanes, but I've never actually flown a crop duster. It would be a similar concept. I just, I'm sure the whole flying over the crop thing would be something you have to be taught. So. You stop streaming it takes a long to spray you can start streaming at the end of when something exciting happens there we go but then it makes a new video for every stream I do so I need to start making some couple little videos for you guys too uh, some that uh, don't have long streams like this because I mean not a lot of people are gonna want to watch the whole stream okay you talked me into I took it down there we go here's that water hole again I'm gonna turn before we get stuck go ahead and spray backwards like this. We'll go back the way we came. And then we'll do the other side over there. There we go. 
All right, what was our first spray rig before you were running around with a 100 foot boom spray auto steer? Uh, myself personally have always been in a 100 foot or bigger. Uh, the first sprayer I ever drove was a 120 foot wheel boom flex coil. Uh, but we've been through a number of flex coils over the years. We had a lot of wheel boom flex coils. And uh, this is the most recent uh, suspended sprayer as far as pull type we bought. Then it was the Apache. We have that Apache AS1010 sprayer. And then now, you know, we built Big Brute. But when our farm first started spraying, you know, we had it done with crop dusters like that person asked earlier. <laughs> uh, and then eventually they, they got a pickup sprayer and they used the pickup sprayer to do a little bit here and there. But it wasn't until probably the early 90s that my dad bought the first wheel boom sprayer. And I want to say it was 80 feet. I'm not entirely sure. And then eventually he upgraded to a 120 foot wheel boom. And then we downgraded, I guess you could say, to a 100 foot. But for a suspended boom, I wouldn't go much over 100 feet. You get much bigger than that and it starts to be a lot of boom hanging out there and it, it wobbles back and forth. It, it's just, chances are if your fields aren't really nice and flat, you're gonna drag the boom. How many gallons of fuel does Brute take? Uh, well, I found out recently, I went to town, I filled her up with fuel and metered it. And these tanks hold in this sprayer about 230 gallons of diesel. I've been spraying on that amount for the past several weeks. I've already got, well, I guess not several weeks. It's been weeks, but we haven't sprayed every day. 2,900 and 2,913 acres have been sprayed so far on this, this tank of fuel. And they're a little under half full. So we've got a little ways to go. I'm really curious to find out how many acres we can spray at five gallon work. So I'm doing a test right now. So I'm gonna try to run it down to the fumes. There's that bump again. I'm just gonna have to go really slow through this thing. Ah, I hate washouts. The water runs down that. There we go. So yeah, I'm curious to find out how many gallons per acre it burns. I don't know yet, but we'll find out shortly when I burn the tanks down. It's really good though, because I'm running, most of the time I'm only running about 1500 RPM, which isn't very high. You know, a lot of the newer sprayers, they run 22, 2500 RPM all the time because they're hydrostatically driven. This has got a mechanical Allison transmission to a, an axle, so it's a lot more efficient with fuel than the newer sprayers. But it is a bigger engine too. I mean, it's 400 and, you know, it, it peaks at 425 horsepower. Well, that's a lot of horsepower for a sprayer. So, truckers are jealous. I'm sure they are. Um, show me your water bottle, please. <laughs> My abused water bottle. There it is. The cap's gotten crushed in a few times, but it's still holding water, so. I'm probably due for a new water bottle. Usually every uh, every two months or so, I get a new water bottle and I throw the old one away. That's just easy to do that. Uh, let's see here. I live outside Montana. Or I'm 20 minutes away from uh, Madison. I'm not sure where that is. How long have I been streaming? An hour and 50 minutes long. I'm down to almost 400 of you guys, so it's uh, obviously been a little too long for some people, which I totally understand, but we're still going strong. I'm down to 724 gallons left in my tank. But I'm getting close to finishing this field. I'll probably finish this field, drive to the next, and then we can end the live stream, because uh, that's a lot of streaming. So I'm gonna go ahead and catch uh, these skips I got here. Let's turn around. You can see as I'm driving over the areas that were skipped, it's uh, kicking the sprayer on and off. means I'm under applying right there the rain that's uh, my applied rate is what the color coordination is on there green means I'm putting on too much red means I'm putting on too little yellow means it's just right 
So depending on my speed, it changes. I like to keep it on that when I'm doing a spray it on and off. Okay, let's intercept that line. I just did a bunch of circles there. Looks like I'm not gonna be able to quite get it all. Get a little skip right there. I'm gonna have to come back, we'll grab that. And then I'm gonna spray up a little bit. We'll get it straightened out. There we go. Okay, let's go back and get those. this little skip right here. reason I decided to stream today too for you guys is uh, this field's nice and big and long. It's easy to stream in. There's a lot of our fields I have to, I need two hands all the time to operate and a lot of concentration too because uh, I can make mistakes pretty quickly and you could uh, end up wrapping a, a boom around a power pole or a ditch or something. So this field's pretty forgiving minus the badger holes and the fat one or two ditches that are in it which you guys saw that one time. Okay, we're back in business. Finishing the last pass on this side. So everything over here has been sprayed, everything over here has been sprayed, or just one pass up the center that I'm doing right now. Let's see, let's go to overlap. There we go, now it's on overlap. I'll show how much overlap I have. Sparrow looks good back there. Okay. All right, what are we doing here? Let's see. My contrast is having a hard time adjusting for the outside. It looks like it's white out there. It'll adjust if I put it out there. Cameras on this phone aren't too bad. They're not quite the best, but I do like the dual camera setup on this phone, so that's why I got it. <laughs> Watching other people work, YouTube is great. I know, right? It totally is. fast to slow it down a little bit. Okay, here's that road again. Let it slow down. Finally done with this ditch. There's actually a pretty nasty right here. I'm just going to take it real slow through this thing. about this truck is it doesn't take long to get up to speed. A zero to 15 miles an hour in about two to three seconds probably, which uh, for an automobile isn't that fast, but for a sprayer that's pretty fast. It shifts for the gears quick. It's really nice. Uh, what phone do you use? This phone right here is the LG G6 Plus. And uh, it's been a good phone. I really like it. It's a solid phone. If you guys are looking for a cheap phone right now, Highly recommend the LG G6. No, it's not sponsored to me or anything. I don't get a discount or anything with it. Bought it with my own money. But uh, it is a good phone. The G7 is out now, and I've heard that's a terrific phone too. If I were to get a new phone, I'd probably pick up the G7. It's really fast. But right now, the G6 is what I've got, and uh, it's a great phone. It's really good. I'll keep using it while I can. I might upgrade to the G7 eventually. Maybe if I can convince LG to sponsor me, right? That'd be cool. So, I feel like I've already put in a day of work. <laughs> nice. Uh, let's see. Do you have any sinkholes to worry about in other fields? If you remember right, Big Bud's stuck. Yeah, there are areas and fields that we do have to be careful about. We typically know where they're all at. That one where that Big Bud got stuck recently, that's uh, a newer field to us. We haven't farmed that very long. So, getting stuck there definitely was new. <laughs> we'll remember that for next year. See all that green stuff growing here? We're killing all this. That's all kosher. I see some thistle, I see some buckwheat. There's some other stuff growing in there. That's why I'm spraying this, that's all growing and it's perfect time to spray it. I have an iPhone 1X, or iPhone X, that's a good iPhone. I've heard good things about the iPhone. I'm tipping on an iPhone guy, but I do know they are good phones. Galaxy S6, that's a good phone too. My wife has the S7, I believe. I don't think it's a six, I think it's a seven. Got a little skip there I'm gonna grab, so we'll do a circle around. So we're doing a spin in a circle here. And I'm gonna nail, get that 
that skip right there. Or they skip most of it. There we go. A little skip right here. We'll grab that one too. Okay. There's my mud tracks from before. Already full of water, isn't that amazing? Perfect. S7 is a good phone. <laughs> S8 Plus, that's a big phone. That sounds like a good phone. Um, do you leave predators or take care of varmints yourself? You know, we typically shoot coyotes when we see them. I don't have a gun with me in here. I usually do have a gun. This year I just haven't really carried one. I should, because it is fun. Um, but we, talk, we, we like to keep the, the coyotes under control. As far as the rest of the predators go, we like our foxes. Foxes keep the, pred or the, the gophers down, the badgers, so we like to keep the foxes around. Coyotes eat them too, but coyotes also eat antelope and deer. Uh, baby, so we, that's why we like to keep the coyotes under control. But as far as gophers and stuff go, they're not bad. But if they ever got out of control, we'd probably look into poisoning them. You know, we shoot them when we can. I used to do a lot more of that when I was younger. Have a nice little patch here that we're gonna spray over. So, what am I spraying? I'm spraying Roundup and uh, LV6, which is a 2,4-D mixture. When, you, when do you stream? I always miss them. I stream very randomly. I wish I could be on more of a schedule for you guys, but it's farming and schedules don't work so good together. You just never know what you're going to do. The weather changes with farming. Your personal schedule changes with farming. Stuff breaks down with changes farming. So I'm not always able to stream. And uh, like today, uh, it worked out that I was able to, so I figured I might as well do a stream since I haven't done one in a while. So... When is the map being released on PlayStation 4? It'll come out on PS4 when it comes out on Xbox One and PC all at the same time. Soon. I keep saying the word soon. <laughs> it is soon. Tomorrow it's supposed to rain here, so uh, that's why we're trying to get some spraying done. I'm jealous of the fuel mileage you mentioned earlier. My 3406E Factor 600 horsepower cat engine tends to average 5 to 5.5 miles per gallon. <laughs> that's a powerful engine. <clears throat> Not only is that a powerful engine, that's an awesome engine. The 3406E, we have a 3406B on the farm right now, rated at about 4, 435 horsepower. Those are great cat engines. You got a lot of horsepower on that end. The 600 horsepower, that's a, that takes a lot of fuel to make that kind of horsepower. So yeah, that's gonna burn it. But that is a good engine. I think you got a great engine for you there. So am I a Chevy guy, Nick? I think I asked that earlier, sorry I didn't answer. Uh, yeah, I typically am a Chevy guy. But I do have a Fummins right now. Our farm picked up a Fummins. So I am now kind of a Ford and Dodge guy. When I was in high school, we had a really sweet Dodge pickup. Keep switching cameras here because I keep getting back this water hole. I'm going sideways right now. I have the steering wheel cranked all the way and I'm not even turning because it's mud. Come on, girl, you can turn. There we go. <laughs> Oh, that's muddy. What a mess. But I want to get close. I want to get all the weeds that are growing around it. My steering is turned 100% to the right right now, and I'm not turning. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. There's some dry ground. Line up with that line. Okay, we're back in business. Perfect. All right. But yeah, anyways, back to the Fummins. The Fummins is awesome. I love that truck. Ford made a good body, a good frame on it. Um, that Cummins engine's awesome. So, I don't know, I'm not, it's kind of like farm equipment. It's not like I have one brand that I'm diehard sworn to. I typically lean Case International when it comes to farm equipment. Uh, so, but I'm not saying I would never own or drive a John Deere or New Holland or Versatile or any of those. Uh, you know, they're good machines too. Same with uh, vehicles. 
but I would obviously go to the case dealership first before I went anywhere else just to see what they got. So yeah, looks like you didn't get off the road edition. <laughs> yeah, no kid. Do you ever have problems with standing water during harvest? Very rarely. Typically, our July and August are so dry that the water is usually gone by then. But it is possible. We have had some big rains during harvest before, so that is always a possibility. Okay, guys, we just finished this field. Let's go ahead and wing this thing up. I'm going to put it in neutral. I'll go ahead and turn the water pump off since we don't need that going. Turn our product off. Let's raise the boom up. Our nice muddy boom that I just sprayed a bunch of mud all over it. Wing her up nice and high here. Perfect. <clears throat> My uh, power cord keeps getting caught here. We'll do this window, that's better. There you go. So we'll drive to the next field. I'll road it down. You guys can watch that. I've got 600 gallons left of chemical. I got quite a bit left. So I'm going to probably end the stream since it's been two hours here. But I'll drive to the next field, wing it out, and then uh, keep spraying. And then you guys can uh, take off. And uh, the poor souls who decide to watch the stream later are going to have to sit through two hours of it. I actually do appreciate it. It's amazing how many people watch the streams all the way through. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. I. It's hard to keep a stream that interesting, you know. Every now and then some fun stuff happens. Okay, it's coming in. Go back a little bit here so you guys can see it rack in the latch there. Hello from Elba. My son Evan loves wa likes watching you. That's awesome. Well, uh... Tell Evan I said hello. Okay, and let's lock it down. Perfect. Okay, we're latched, locked. Let's shift her to high range. Parking brake, just double check. I didn't set it, but I always want to make sure it's off. Let's put it in drive. All right, let's go cruising. One more field done. Another uh, 4,300 some acres to go. Actually, it's not quite that much. It's probably more like 3,000 some. Got some traffic here. Look good on either side of the road here. Spring wheat's looking really nice. All right, here's our stop. I believe I sprayed one pass on this. Yeah, I'll go to the end. We'll go one more. We're gonna spray this field right over here. You can see I already made a pass along the edge of the road there this morning. thing's really easy to drive. It's it's like driving a big car. I mean, it really isn't that hard at all. Now, spraying with a 100-foot boom with it, yeah, that takes a little bit more uh, experience to spray, but as far as just driving this thing, it's real easy. I see the wind's blowing from the northwest a little bit, but I did already pre-spray uh, this morning. I did a lap around the crop side of the field here, so I've already sprayed right here. So I don't have to worry about getting close to the crop. Okay, let's swing this out. Put it neutral. Lift the booms up. There we go. Extend it out. 
That one's not going out because the other one is. It's a pressure pressure system, so wherever the hardest or easiest uh, hydraulics to operate is what goes first. And then once that one's done moving, then the other one starts moving. So if I'm on a hill, which I'm on right now, a slight hill, the left one went first because I was downhill. Same thing will happen with the top boom too. Alright, that's out all the way. There it goes. The other one is extending at the moment. And then once that one's done, this one's going to kick on and I'll start going. There it goes. down to the ground and I'll get ready to start spraying here and then I think I'm probably gonna end the stream I got power poles in this field and I really don't want to really don't want to run into anything so uh, yeah <laughs> but it was fun streaming with you guys all right there we go that's about right turn my water pump back on okay let's see let's go back to me real quick guys floor it <laughs> nice all right guys well Thanks for chiming in with me. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, please. It's always good. More subscribers for me. Definitely works out better when I got more subscribers. It's weird how it works. I get more views, I get more ad revenue, and I have more motivation to make more videos. So yeah, do that, please. That's awesome. Definitely subscribe to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'm on all of those. Uh, if you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel, I also do a lot of updates in the community section, a lot of pictures other stuff too so try that too and uh yeah definitely uh hopefully everything goes good for us we should get a little rain tomorrow which is fine a little more rain not a problem we got a lot already but that'll be great to get some more and uh yeah there'll be some updates coming out soon on the farming simulator map so hang tight guys it's happening soon don't worry about it eventually <laughs> you'll get somewhere so yeah that's that so all right well, i'm signing off uh you guys have a good one god bless and uh, yeah, do something fun, right? It's summertime. That's what I'm gonna do once we're done work.